Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit more about forces on curved surfaces. In this video, I'm going to show you a little trick I learned um, from my professor when I took fluid mechanics. It's a really neat trick. Um, what I was talking about in the last video, method two, was that we could replace um, chunks of liquids and other fluids with resultant forces, um, H and V. We can replace those forces at the point of concurrency if the pressure distribution creates concurrent forces. Now, from for all of these videos and for the next couple examples, we're only going to use simple geometric shapes. And simple geometric shapes, I'm talking about, you know, perfect circles, maybe, you know, perfect half circles, and then, you know, maybe perfect quarter circles. So anything that's that's relatively simple and easy to set up and solve for. Um, let me show you this trick using an example. Um, say we had say we had two we had a hinge here. We had a just a little block there, and we had this this big gate, but it was made out of a solid material, okay? So all of this is solid material, and it's a hinge here at A, and just a, a stopper at B, so... And this this gate is actually holding up all this H2O, all this water here. So all of this is water, and it goes up to the... We can say the very top of this gate, so it's not letting any more water in that way. But this water, if we were to draw the, just, um, just the gate and the reaction forces itself, we have AX, we have AY, right? We have the weight of this solid piece of gate, we'll just say WG. We have a reaction here at B, and this water here actually creates a pressure distribution along this side of the gates, so this surface here. The pressure distribution looks something like this, right? So obviously it's, it's greatest at the bottom and it, it eventually goes to zero because up here is a free atmosphere, free atmospheric pressure. Right? That means zero atmospheric pressure. And this pressure distribution, um, well, how can we how can we solve maybe the reactions at A or B or whatever the question's trying to ask? We can use this pressure distribution created by the water and we can replace this pressure distribution um, with concurrent resultant forces H and V. And that's that was in the last video. If you haven't seen that, please see that first. Um, but what I can do is actually, here's the really neat trick. Um, Let's actually take an outline. Let's cut this this solid gate in half because that's where the water is touching. It's not touching this side of the half. It's only touching this side of the half. So let's let's cut this this whole gate, okay? And bear with me. Let's cut this gate and let's take an outline of this quarter semicircle solid shape and move it either, we, well, we move it into the liquid it's touching. So, what I mean by that is this, this right here, this shape, this quarter circle, let's take its outline, you know what an outline is, right? And if we, if we look at this, we can actually see that the pressure distribution created on this surface, on this solid surface, is the same exact pressure distribution created on this chunk of water. So all this, all we did was took the outline of this shape and moved it towards the right at the same elevation. And now this is actually water. This is, We just took that outline and we moved it this way and now it's just an outline of the water. And that water covers the same amount of volume that this quarter semicircle covers in its solid form. And this water, let's call this a water chunk. This water chunk actually has a pressure distribution 
here, right? That's the same pressure distribution here, right? And that makes sense because it's at the same elevation. And then down here at the bottom, we have another pressure distribution. And then down here, it's obviously zero at the top. It's the pressure distribution on the left of that water chunk is actually that, right? Remember, we're just talking about the water chunk, right? We took an outline, we moved it, and we solved for that outline using this pressure distribution. Now, if we, to, if we were to draw this, um, actually, let's look at this pressure distribution first, this curved pressure distribution first. Since it's a perfect semicircle, these forces that are created by this pressure distribution here are all concurrent forces, meaning they they line up to, actually let me do that in a different color, they line up to this point here, and that's called the point of concurrency, right? And we can replace this curved pressure distribution by resultant forces H and V. Now let me, my goodness that car isn't starting. Let me draw a free body diagram of this water chunk down here. I'll just, I'll make it solid. Okay? And this pressure distribution, it looks like we have forces going in the left and in the bottom direction. So, at the point of concurrency, we'll replace this pressure distribution here with um, H for horizontal and V for vertical. And the reason V is going down in this case is because... Um, well, this pressure distribution is, is pushing down and it's pushing towards the left. So that's why we have V and H. And then for the weight of the chunk of water, well, we got to include that too, right? So the weight, actually, if you remember from statics, this distance is 4R over 3 pi. And we have the weight of the H2O going down here at this distance from here. And then this pressure distribution is linear, so it, we can call that maybe FP1, and we know how to solve for that. And then up here, we also have another pressure distribution. It acts like this. Oops. It acts like this, so let me forget that. Let me draw that in a different color. We have maybe FP2. And it's acting at... Um, a third of a distance um, from the bottom, right? Because this is a triangle, and you know the, the pressure at the centroid of the surface. Um, we know the centroid of a triangle. We find out the force at the centroid of the surface, and we place it at a distance one-third from the bottom, right? Because that's the base of the triangle. So that, that's just statics, right? And now that we have... FP1, we have V, we have H, we have weight of the water, and we have FP2. We can actually solve for H and V using just static, so the sum of the forces. Um, in the, let's say, X direction equals zero, right? If this is Y, this is X, this is positive. So we have FP2, and then we have negative H. And that's all the forces in the x, so that's equal to zero. And then um, the sum of the forces in the y is equal to zero. So we have negative v going down plus fp1 going up. And then weight of the h2o going down. And that's equal to zero. So using this, we can actually say that h is equal to fp2. We can say B is equal to FP1 minus the weight of the water. And now we know what H and V are. We know what H and V are because we analyzed the outline of this body, or half of its body, um, using a water chunk. And now that we know what H and V are, we can actually replace this pressure distribution here on the free body diagram of the solid with H and V at its point of concurrency. And that's, that's kind of the trick. So if we were to draw this solid body of 
mass again, or this, this solid gate. Remember we have a x, we have a y, and then we have the weight of the gate, then we have b, and this pressure distribution here, this blue pressure distribution here, was the same as the pressure distribution here at red on the same volume of chunk of water. And we replaced that pressure distribution with H and V because these are concurrent forces and we replaced that pressure distribution with H and V acting at the point of concurrency. And here at the water chunk we know that the point of concurrency is at the very bottom left of this half semicircle. So on the free body diagram of this, the point of concurrency would be here, right? So we can actually replace H and V. Oops, that's not a, that should be at the center. So that's, that's V, and then we have H. And now we can just take away all the water because we've already accounted for that pressure distribution. Now, all we have to do well, the free body diagram is done. Now you have H and V. Um, you have weight of the gate, and maybe they're saying, oh, what's the reaction at B? And if we took the moment about A, we can solve for B using H and V and the weight of the gate. And so that's kind of a neat trick, and maybe it'll make a little bit more sense in the next um, example or so.